What's up, Chicago? Welcome to the Chicago Sports Podcast, presented by PointsBet. Use promo code CHGO when you sign up to get two risk-free bets up to $2,000. I'm Kevin Kadek, head of content here at CHGO, and we are gearing up for draft day as we speak. Our war room is fully armed and operational as Ryan Poles prepares to enter his first draft as GM of the Bears. We have a lot of fun stuff planned for Plan for you with our draft day live coverage. We're going live on YouTube at nine tonight, and we'll be following the last 10 picks or so and talking about how they affect the Bears preparation for day two, unless, of course, the Bears somehow trade up. <laughs> and speaking of day two, we are going to be live starting at 6 p.m. for the Bears picks in the second and third round. Adam Hogue, Olin Krutz, and Will DeWitt will be here on this set while Nick Moriano reports from Hallis Hall. It's going to be pretty cool. Then on Saturday, we're going to wrap it all up with a live podcast after Ryan Poles addresses the media. So make sure you're hitting subscribe on this channel and setting those notifications to make sure that you're here for the fun. All right, on to today's show. We are going to be talking a little bit more generally about the NFL draft and where it's being held. Vegas, baby, Vegas. Veggie. So let's meet today's <laughs> uh, table members. Here to my immediate left is Casey Standahard. Hello. The maestro of social here at CHGO. <laughs> Making his fifth appearance. I didn't get you a jacket, Herb, but I apologize. <laughs> Five timers club. Herb Lawrence of CHGO White Sox. Hello. And then sitting to the left of, of Herb is Cody Del Mendo from CHGO Cubs. Guys, how are you doing today? Doing awesome. It's uh, White Sox are playing right now, losing, but we're awesome. <laughs> The shot of Malort didn't help. I mean, yet. Sean took it. I don't take it. I take it if they win and they're losing, so I'm all right. <laughs> yeah, it's great to be back. Uh, glad you invited me back, Kevin. So, this, your, this is your, your second, first time, second your time. Third, third time. time, yeah. yeah. Second time. All right, we're, we're getting I'm up there. I'm not quite Steve Martin yet. Will DeWitt of <laughs> CHGO Bears fame was supposed to be making his debut appearance on today's show. He's going to be involved in all the in-studio coverage this weekend. He was on his way here and blew out a tire, so well, he is waiting on the side of the road, waiting for his uh, car to be towed. I wish you were here, Will. But we need uh, a super chat for Will. Someone making the relief, <laughs> making the pinch hit appearance is Herb. So Herb, we appreciate I, that. I've been there. I had a flat tire just down the street from here, and I had to get my car towed. But I live relatively close, so yeah, it wasn't that bad. I feel sorry for Will. It's really tough to have a flat tire, especially if you don't have a jack in the car. So. People will make fun of you that you can't change your own tire. But when am I going to rip that, it off the, the lug nuts? What the hell? Exactly. It wasn't my car. It was my fiance's. So didn't have a jack in it. I need to get one in there for her. All right. So I want to play a little game here. We're going to be talking a lot about Vegas today. This is a kind of a laid back show, obviously. We don't talk expressly about sports all the time. So we're going to really be talking about Las Vegas, Las Vegas sports connections to Chicago. Um, but at first I want to see if anyone can actually fill in the missing lyric here. There's blackjack and poker and the roulette wheel, a fortune won and lost on every deal. All you need is a strong heart and a nerve of steel. So Viva Las Vegas. <laughs> is that Viva. it? Really? Winner chicken yeah. dinner. Oh my gosh. Ah. I should have known yeah. that and I did not. <laughs> wow. If, if I would have been singing it a little bit more, it <laughs> okay, probably would have Did helped. like the voice and the hair. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the, the NFL draft is being held in Vegas. It was originally supposed to be held there during the pandemic. So I guess this is kind of a makeup. Um, I think they just had the, what the NHL all-star All -Star game, game and they, the NBA all-star game too. They somehow incorporated the, the, the fountains or whatever. Um, we were supposed to have Will here, so I was going to get more into the bear stuff, but of everyone here on the set, from a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you get into the NFL draft? I think um, <laughs> probably, especially since the Bears have been not having first-round picks the last couple of years and same thing this year, probably like, I mean, my old job I had to, so that was probably like an 8, but now I don't have to worry about the Bears too much, so it's like a 5 now. I'd say it's probably like a 3 for me. <laughs> I over the years, I've probably tuned into the first round, and that's really about yeah. it. Like i i love i love <laughs> I love gambling on college football, but like I barely know any of the players outside of the quarterback. Um, I get into the quarterback uh, storylines on like which ones should go first or second, whatever. But have you placed any bets on this? I took the Packers to take a wide receiver tonight, um, and they're with their first pick. 
Okay. Uh, it's at like minus 155, so it's a pretty decent favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, Devontae Adams, gone. They To I Vegas. Mean, yeah, to, to <laughs> Vegas. Uh, gone, but still there. Yeah, so with him gone, the Packers didn't really sign a receiver. That's big name, so why yeah. not get a receiver? The, the books think that it's kind of a lock. And so. they've never had a first-round receiver for the Aaron Rodgers era. The yeah. only offensive player they've drafted is his subsequent – replacement jordan love <laughs> yeah so it'll make aaron so, happy <laughs> yeah I, I feel like it's it's a little bit of that too like they're you know they're trying to they paid him so they need to get him a receiver now if they're gonna right. not keep Devonte adams around so um i like that yeah. bet so i'm gonna have to tail you at some point or look at some <laughs> i haven't made any bets on this on this draft yet yeah. casey have you no i have not i have not i'm they, too afraid I did a three-legged parlay the other day and lost, and so I'm done. The three-legged parlay? <laughs> Ever? Yeah, like three different three different teams. I like legged. the three-legged parlay. Like, it makes me think of the three-legged race. Do people not call it <laughs> that? three-legged parlay? <laughs> oh, well. I like that. I, I like did three one le- of those. I, I like three-legged better. I'm not making it funny. <laughs> I, like. I did the, one of those. For, if you want to use the Bears, like, for, as far as, like, what position, like, that the books think that they're going to take, they think the Bears are either going to take a wide receiver or – an offensive lineman with their first pick because it's like plus 200 for them to draft yeah. a receiver right. and like plus 250 for them to take an offensive lineman. Um, you know, they're not picking till 39th, right? Uh, so to for, me, there's so many different I, things I could happen tonight, yeah. Like, yeah, I, and I don't think they're going to trade up into the first round, no. No. but. I will. I, I. There will be violence here if the actual the Bears trade up. I, I think that would just be very. I'm so tired of Ryan Pace trading up, and I think mm-hmm. that's yeah. a big part of the reason that the Bears are in the predicament they are, they're in. Exactly. So I just don't think Ryan Poles really looks <laughs> at this situation and says, okay, here's one person who, like, or, or, like what are you going to do? Trade up to, like, you know, 18, yeah. 20, whatever. Um, th- that's not going to happen, and I think Poles does realize that, and I, I think really the more realistic option is that the Bears keep trading back and, and start amassing more picks because there's right. so many holes up there at Hallis Hall. Yeah, I, you you talk about uh, trading up or whatever. I I think the most exciting time I ever really did get in recent history for the Bears draft was actually last year when they drafted Fields because I just didn't think they were going to have a chance to get him. Uh, and then, you know, they that was cool. Yeah, that was like I was like ecstatic about it because you know you heard all year that. Fields was a top two or three quarterback yeah. in college football, and you were like, but there's also that the the, that that five minutes of dread. It was like, please do not draft Mac Jones. Yeah, like, you know, yeah, like, Just, yeah please yeah. do the right thing here. So <laughs> it to me, like when I think about the draft and incorporate with the Bears, it's like in recent history, at least, it's like ah, oh, Justin Fields. I'll, I'll always remember that night that it mm-hmm. happened. Right. So. I can't say that about a lot of picks. I mean, I guess I'll always remember the night they drafted Trubisky and all the fans at the draft party were, like, screaming no or whatever. But Mike Glennon there at the draft party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, but- I don't want to remember that, but it's it's not going to come out of my head. So. <laughs> It's historic, right? And in past years, what was it, the last two years, we were doing this remote. And mm-hmm. so these these families and these players were at home and kind of getting that call. And it's back in person again. It's going to be a party. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. And these are kind of the clips and the moments that we'll look back on. So for for me, I think it's 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 exciting. I would give it like a six or a seven on my yeah on my list. I think it's cool that they've actually turned this into an event and they're bringing yeah. it to different cities. And they've had it. You know, they started off twice here in Chicago. I went to the first one. I covered it. I will say that actually covering the NFL draft is like the worst thing ever. I was all the way at the top of the auditorium theater. It seems so glamorous. The, the, it does seem glamorous, <laughs> but when you're you're covering it, when you're in the theater, you're like five to ten minutes behind Twitter. Yeah. So all this, like, did you cover it at all, Her? I did not. I went uh, just through the the spectacular they had that week, you know, walking down in that, that area. part was awesome. And Grant park and seeing all, like I was mm-hmm. amazed at the amount of out of town fans that were there. Yeah, right. You would just walk by and here's a pack of Cowboys fans. And here's some Bengals fans. And here's some people who have come all the way from Seattle. That was super cool. And they had a lot of like fun things set up. So I think that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Actually like people wanting to be in the auditorium theater, total zero. <laughs> yeah. No one. Yeah. As you said, they leak those picks way before the actual pick gets announced on NFL Network or ESPN. So I don't know. I, for the NFL, for me, yeah. it's a TV sport. 
exclusively. Yeah. Even the games, the draft, you need to be at on watching the yeah. TV because that's <laughs> why the NFL is so popular. It's it's a TV sport. No one wants to go to the game or actually the draft because there's no cachet. There's no glamour to it. You're already past the whatever's been announced, and that's garbage. Do you guys remember I'm when Roger Goodell was like sitting in the chair and there was a like oh. fire and he was like doing the? That, so that was <laughs> that was like one of the highlight sports highlights of the pandemic. In, yeah, in spring of 2020, it was like the last dance, and then. That it was that was like yeah. really the first Twitter thing that happened, <laughs> yeah. and like the crazy thing about like the NFL was largely untouched by the pandemic. Yeah, they didn't give up games. They no. didn't give up a lot of. I mean, I guess twenty twenty there was no fans at Soldier Field, but there were some fans in other other stadiums or whatever. They were able to play a full full schedule or whatever. Um, and barely missed the beat. I mean, they would miss games like it would be scheduled for Saturday. Like, hey, we're gonna play this game on Tuesday. Um, so you gonna you gonna be there? Cool. If you ain't. I'm, I'm, we're gonna play on Tuesday though. The NFL yeah. was like, good job, Major League yeah. Baseball. Miss half of your season. We ain't missing a damn game. I, I have missed the the Roger Goodell commissioner hugs. You guys yeah. like those? Oh, I mean, those are nice. Those are the best thing Roger Goodell does for the NFL. <laughs> it seems like those are the best moments for those guys' lives. Well, and it seems just welcoming. He's got a nice big, welcome to the NFL. Yeah, well, now I am going to screw you over as much as possible. Yeah, yes. he doesn't mean it. That's why it's, <laughs> the last it's time funny to me. Like but I love them getting the hats and they're just just new fresh faces. It was like Manfred giving the headphones to all oh, the God. the baseball players uh-huh. after the lockout. Oh my yeah. God! Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. you don't. Yeah, no. He's, That was my view. Woo. Exactly. Uh, nice. Might as well watch it on TV. Goodness yeah, gracious. Steven Nicholas, yeah, Stephen Nicholas, for people listening on the podcast, is actually showing us the view from the top of the auditorium. And it's like a steep pitch. Like, you're all the way up there. Um, I don't know if you remember, Stephen, but uh, Jameis Winston wasn't there. Marcus Mariota weren't there. They were the top two overall picks. So that kind of, like, put a damper on things. Yeah. Kevin White was there. I was all jazzed about that. Hey, look, Kevin White, the, this is going to be a dawn of a new era. Was I think that was uh, Ryan Pace's first draft pick, right? It was. It was, yes. it was. You bought a Kevin White jersey? <laughs> you got to bring. You got to oh, wear that You got to break it out, put duct tape over it, put a new name for whoever's number. Is it I have Donald a, Mooney now? Is he 11 now? He was a different number when he first got there. Okay. I think he was, he went from uh, 11 to 13 now. Okay. All right. Well, you got you got to put duct tape. It's a it's a good classic duct tape over it. And put some name on there. I don't care what. Was it is. Ezekiel Elliott in that draft? And he showed up in the the half on oh, the half shirt. I do, li- I do like the fashion. The fashion is great. And I remember it wasn't that warm in Chicago. It wasn't cold necessarily, no. but like a half shirt was kind of weird. For sure. I just you know the NFL draft. I get excited for watching it on TV. The Mike Mayock usually, and that's going to be weird. Like, is he going to be there? The yeah. former Las Vegas Raiders GM manager in Vegas working for the NFL Network. I think that was his best role. And when he took the L.A. Raiders job, or uh, Vegas Raiders job, I was like, Ugh, that's going to be a disaster. And it turned out to be such. Who's your favorite um, draft analyst? Mayock, by far. Yeah. He, when he was doing the... the I you going to say Eric at home. Uh, Eric Edholm is one of the best. I mean, <laughs> but like, I thought you meant on a national TV stage. I'm just playing. I, yeah. I want to get Eric some shine here. There is no yeah. but no one better than Eric Edholm. He's taller than you think he would be. He is. <laughs> Cody, who do you like? Uh, as far as national ones, I mean, yeah, the only ones I can really think of are Kuiper. And he just kind of sticks out. It's such a cottage industry. There's so many yeah. different people. I don't know if you have anyone. Casey. I don't. You don't? No. Uh, th- th- now, it's, now it's the time. I know. I need to pick a fave. Yeah. I don't know if everyone remembers Joel Buxbaum from I Pro do. Football Weekly. He was awesome. My my first internship, uh, the late Joel Buxbaum, he's probably been dead 20 years now, mm-hmm. uh, a very kind of eccentric dude who just lived alone in his Brooklyn apartment and really was Mel Kuyper before Mel Kuyper was Mel Kuyper, you know, Kuyper. Mm-hmm. And he was awesome. But And I like my internship at Pro Football Weekly was I was kind of like his lackey and like literally like anything <laughs> – uh, he wanted legged out. I had to do. Mm-hmm. I took a call on. Um, remember Joe Borchard? I do. Yeah, he wa- he wanted some uh, some intel on on Joe Borchard for the upcoming N- NFL draft, and wow. uh, that and, was a lot of fun. and he didn't get drafted. He didn't. <laughs> so he just did a <laughs> lot of leg work for nothing. Former standard for quarterback got drafted by another team in Chicago though. Yeah. Hit the farthest home run in guaranteed rate field history to That's this day. Right. 
an absolute bomb. Yeah. Do you, do you know the exact footage? I do not, but I think it actually was Eric Chavez, but they don't want a opposing player to hold that record, so they gave it to Joe Borchard. But, yeah, I'm – Bushbaum, didn't he, like, pretty much start everything? Like, the, he was just writing journals on, on players, and uh, this player has this, that, and the other. He was amazing, and he just knew everything. And actually, if you want to read a great piece of... Um, 504. 504 feet by Joe Borchard. If you want to read a great piece of sports journalism, uh, Juliet McCurr of the New York Times actually wrote uh, a feature on Joel Buxbaum after he died. I mean, they found him just, like, dead in his apartment. Mm, wow. Um, and he was basically, like, he was just a very, like, weird guy. And, um, it, like, he was so respected, and he drew all of these um, NFL executives to his funeral. Um, he came up with the, the, the one line, and it's probably not okay to say in 2022 anymore, but looks like Tarzan plays like Jane. Which is yeah. like I, I do <laughs> remember funny. that that got repeated a lot during sports radio days. Wow. All the time. <laughs> All right, the best way to support CHGO <laughs> is to download the Casey, points. you ever heard that one? No, I have okay. not. First time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you know who Tarzan is? That's like, I feel like, like Tarzan like, is like a very dated reference. Yeah, like, like the character. 1942 Yeah, type thing. I get the reference. I just, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> the best way to support CHGO is to download the PointsBet app and use code CHGO when you sign up. If you do that right now, you will get two risk-free bets up to $2,000. That's not it. If you make a $50 or more first-time deposit, you will receive a free CHGO membership, which unlocks all of our web content, and you even get a free shirt of your choice from the CHGO locker. That's $2,000 in free bets, a free CHGO membership, and a free T-shirt from the CHGO locker, all for making more than a $50 first-time deposit at PointsBet. If you have any questions, you can email pointsbet at allchgo.com, and we will help you out. PointsBet is your home for live in-play betting, and it just got even better. Introducing PointsBet's new feature, Live NBA Same Game Parlay. For the first time ever, you can build the perfect Live NBA Same Game Parlay only with PointsBet. That's going to come in handy with the Bulls out. Gambling is going to have to keep me interested in the NBA, so that's awesome. <laughs> I can combine my, per my favorite bets anytime during the game. If I want more, I can also boost my Live Same Game Parlay. Watch live, parlay live, and boost live with points bet. And now online signup is available for in Illinois. So ahead of this NFL draft, you can download the points bet app right now and register your account from start to finish, all from your phone, and take that bet that uh, that Cody was was talking about the Packers there. So what are you waiting for? Once the game starts, don't just bet. Live your bet life with points bet. Gambling problem? Call one 522 4700 And another way to support CHGO here is to listen to our podcast and live shows on every team every day. We have post-game shows, premium written content for members at allchgo.com, dope merch for all teams, and a free shirt when you become a member. There's also the members-only Discord, Discord lounge, which we will be hanging out in tonight as we break down the draft. I think that'll be pretty cool. That's so cool. there's a really great community going on there. We got yeah. great T-shirts. I finally got my CHGO logo shirt. This is... The premiere on the show, I think this is pretty solid. Love it. So. Oh, it's awesome. It's an awesome show. I, I, have, I have the Sky shirt. I have the White Sox Brawlers Sox shirt. Become a member of allchgo.com. Get a free shirt. They're you got great. the flag one, like like on the chest, like the, little, the small flag one. Is that your favorite one? That's my favorite My one. whole family yeah. wants shirts now. They're like, and we want to support. I'm like, too. yeah. yeah. Sign Sign up. Up. I have two Sign of the up. Cubs Wear ones, them. actually. <laughs> so. And we talk to the members on Discord all the time. Well, I'm on the White Sox part, and we talk – Every day. The game's going on right now. The Discord is going off. Sean and I are, and Vinny are talking to the people every time. So if you're a Bears fan, maybe talking to Adam Hogue or Will DeWitt. If you're a Cub fan, you could talk to Cody Del Mendo, Luke Stuckmeyer. You could <laughs> talk to Ryan Herrera or the two guys from Cubs Related. It's like they're all there. AllCHGO.com to become a member. So, Herb, your numbers have been really good on the CHGO Sox podcast. Do you attribute that to people being mad about how poorly they're playing. I think our show, Sean. Or would they be better if, if they were winning? I think the winning makes the team and everybody else, like the people who are going to be there are already going to be there no matter what. The winning makes the casual fan to come out. So our show already with Sean and Vinny and myself, I think we have a good um, vibe. We are comfortable with each other. So people who are watching get to, understand what we are about but the, when the White Sox win 
we'll go up. Yeah. A hundred percent because we'll get the casual people in there. They're like, oh, let me check this out. See what the White Sox are talking about. When they lose this eight game losing streak, even though we're mad and the numbers look good, I don't feel like we're at our peak of people that we can get. <laughs> so White Sox, be good instead of bad. Is that what you I saw? Like in your days at the score, like how like the twenty fifteen Bears versus the twenty eighteen Bears, what's the difference? Um, we saw all the time when I was at score, yes, people get mad and they call in more, but callers don't equal listeners. So bears being good means the score is better. Mm -hmm. The viewer is going to be, or the listener is going to be more. So yeah, we are going to be hyped up more and the, the viral things are going to be out there on Twitter and all the such, uh, social media things, but the numbers are going to be down because, a bad team only brings the people who are already going to be in the in the building. You need the people who are just walking past the church to come into the congregation. <laughs> Interesting. I, well, I we will want, say yeah. I will say this was a, I want to say it was towards the end of last week. The Cubs lost a game. And it wasn't like angry, angry like loss. It was just like a oh, uh, they just lost the game. But then the White Sox. You know, they're in the midst of that eight-game losing streak, and they lost, and we had our shows at the same time, and I remember checking to see how many people were watching us and how many people were watching you guys, and y'all doubled us, <laughs> at least. So, I do feel like if you're if they're losing, you still bring in people, at least on YouTube, at least, mm -hmm. because people want to vent. And uh, we've even kind of noticed that, too, for like the, like the Cubs, because even though they're kind of like a retooling, rebuilding team, even on nights that they lose annoying games, the the chat is more people. Yeah. I want to try the eight-game winning streak and see what that's all about. Oh, I bet it'll be more. <laughs> yeah. But still, you yeah, had a yeah. lot of people watching, and, and it was a, it was a late-night game too. So uh, that's just my two cents. <laughs> well, we want a lot, of, uh, a lot of Chicago wins here at CHGO. Obviously, the, the Bulls are on their up-and-up, up, even though they've ended the season. The Blackhawks say they're rebuilding. Hopefully, they are. And they'll, they'll start winning more games. Hopefully the White Sox make that playoff appearance and, and a deep run. And uh, the Cubs may do their rebuild, whatever, you know, whatever kind of rebuild they're doing. <laughs> and then Ryan Pohl somehow starts building a winner tonight, um, starting with the NFL draft. We are talking Chicago and Vegas, though. Um, Chicago and Vegas, they don't have a lot of sports ties. And obviously Vegas has not had pro sports teams until very recently with, with the Golden Knights and, and then the Raiders. The Blackhawks have actually had a terrible record against the Golden Knights, although they did get a win last night, and they were able to, to end the Golden Knights' um, playoff chances, which was pretty awesome. But there's something like 3-14 and 14 all time against Vegas, which is insane. Wow. Yeah, like if, you, if you had told someone in 2015, Vegas <laughs> is going to get an expansion team, and then the Blackhawks are just going to play terribly against them for the next five years, you wouldn't have believed it. Yeah, no. Yeah. They, they hit the ground running. Weren't they in the Stanley Cup they final either the in the first year. or second they year? Were. First year? Yeah. Yes, they and were. Now, now they've actually gone out and um, spent a lot of money and gotten a lot of aging players. So uh, reality is going to hit them in the <laughs> yeah. face very quickly. I do want to get out there and go to a game, uh, looks, preferably against the Seems Blackhawks. like fun. Looks like a show awesome. out there. Yeah. They, they do the Vegas thing for the like Vegas the Golden logo. Knights. The logo that they sport is pretty cool. Sick. The Bears got a win against the Raiders last year in Vegas. That was like one of the really like few it highlights. Of, it was one of the few games that fields the Jesper Horstead. Yeah, hookup. <laughs> it was one of the few Bears games that I bet the Bears on last year. I bet against them a lot last year, but that game I definitely bet on them. <laughs> That's where you get all those Jordans from. Right? <laughs> the winning is betting against the Bears. I, I, I mean. It's just kind of how I do things sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so the one obvious tie. Um, Vegas and Chicago is that actually two of the greatest Cubs in Cubs history come from Las Vegas. And no, I'm not talking about Sean Bosky. Sean Bosky is actually from Nevada. And I, I guess he's closer to Reno. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Mike McDougal, White Sox re reliever is from Vegas. Um, White Sox great. Yeah. Rocky Biddle, White Sox great. Ugh. Also from, <laughs> from Nevada. I, another one is uh, Aaron Rowan, who's a big time. Uh, is Aaron Rowan from Vegas? He is a big time uh, uh, Bears fan. Yeah, he is. That's yeah, right. we should get him on the the Bears show and the White Sox show. One hundred percent. He he would be doing it because he's a very friendly guy. He's awesome. Nice. I mean, I'm like surprised he hasn't gotten into a post 
career he, media job. Yeah, he works for the White Sox, I think, a couple years ago. I don't know if it's still there. Yeah. He's like their outfield coordinator teaching young minor leaguers how to play the outfield. Okay. It doesn't so work right now really because uh, Andrew Vaughn and uh, Gavin Sheets are not great at it, but whatever. He was a great out defensive outfielder, though. Very much so. Yeah. Ran into way, way too many walls. Right, yeah. That's when, <laughs> when I think of him, that's all I can think of is all oh, his Aaron catches Rowan. he made run into walls. All right, back to the Cubs. So anyway. Please, Cody, here. <laughs> Greg Maddox is from Vegas. Chris Bryan is from Vegas. And I want to pose this question to the panel here. Is who actually had the better Cubs career? The knee-jerk reaction is going to say Maddox because Maddox is one of the top ten pitchers of all time and an all-time stud. But let's go over his Cubs only stats. Then I will go over the Bryant's stats, and then we can talk from there. Greg Maddox played a total of 10 seasons with the Chicago Cubs. He had that first stint from 1986 to 1992. Then he went to Atlanta because the Cubs wouldn't pay him. Came back again 2004 to 2006 when they, we thought they were going to retool and build off of that 2003 season. They did not. Then he was dealt at the deadline to, I think, the Dodgers. Um. Yeah. Anyway, that sounds about right. Yeah. yeah, he won one Cy Young with the Cubs. One of his five Cy Youngs with the Cubs. That was came in 1992 on his way out. He made two All Star appearances. He piled up 133 wins. Had a combined ERA of 3.61, which is not great. I mean, not well. It is great, but not not to to his career standards. <laughs> uh, he compiled a total of 33.7 WAR. That's the baseball ref one. Made one playoff appearance, did not pitch well in two appearances against the Giants. That was in 1989. Let's go to Chris Bryant, Stephen. Chris Bryant, the dearly departed Chris Bryant, who is now in Colorado playing in front of our DNVR friends. He played seven seasons on the north side, 2015 to 2021. Won a Rookie of the Year in 2015. An NL MVP in 2016. Hit 160 home runs. Slash line of 279, 376, 501, compiled 27.7 war, made five postseason appearances, and has that World Series ring. Yes, sir. <sighs> Casey, you uh, put this out to our followers on CHGO Sports on Twitter. And you did a poll. How is that going? I did. Uh, so the poll just ended. I made it right up to the show. Uh, 58% of people voted that. Vegas native Greg Maddox had a better Cubs career than Chris Bryant. So it was 58% for Maddox, and Bryant had 42% of the votes. A lot of people saying in the comments, I think his name is Nick, he said Maddox may have a, the better overall player, ha, may have been the better overall player, but KB was a bona fide superstar who was a huge part in ending in a 108-year drought. So a lot of people are saying World Series trumps all. They're going with Bryant, even though Mad Dog got more of the votes on Twitter. Okay. We will defer to our resident Cubs fan here. Cody, do you agree? Uh, that Chris Bryant is better than, or was a, had a better Cubs career? Well, they're than, saying well, Greg Maddox. Maddox. Is saying, Greg yeah. Maddox? Oh, the people okay. are voting. The people um, have spoken. No, I do not agree with the people <laughs> voting. Uh, it, to me, it's just the, the way Chris Bryant left. It, he didn't even leave on bad terms. Like the, the, one, the one who left last year that, on bad terms was Anthony Rizzo, but – when Chris Bryant started getting the injury bug in 2018, people started jumping on him, and it just never healed up because he was kind of – I don't want to even say he was injury prone. He just had a lot of nagging injuries mm -hmm. from 2018 until the end. Uh, people quickly forgot that he was arguably <laughs> one of the top five players in baseball from 2015 to 2017. Um, he was en route to another awesome season in 2018 before the shoulder injury. Made an all-star team in 2019 despite the nagging injuries. 2020, only played half the games. It was the pandemic year. I don't know how, like why people want to use that as a reason he was so – like that they don't like him. Yeah. And even last year he was an all-star again. And I know all-star is based off fan voting, but he was having a really solid season. It led to the Cubs being able to trade him for really decent prospects, one that couldn't be on the Cubs, Cubs by midseason. Um, yeah, I, to me, Chris Bryant – he, he is the one the Cubs will miss the most whenever we look back in five years between him, Baez, uh, Schwarber, and, and Rizzo. Um, that's just my opinion. Uh, 
he's 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 off to a decent start in Colorado. He hasn't hit a homer yet, but he's got a you know solid numbers. Um, and he's just a really good dude. And not that Greg Maddox isn't a good dude. But like, <laughs> he, he like to me like everyone that voted for Greg Maddox was just out on Chris Bryant three years ago, and it it angers me. <laughs> If I had told you that the guy who won a Rookie of the Year, NL MVP, and threw the baseball that won the Chicago Cubs, won the World Series, <laughs> would not be in a Cubs uniform by 2022, you would have never believed that. I mean, it's the sort of thing where I would have been like, he would have already had a statue at Wrigley. And yeah. I wonder if Chris Bryan's number ever gets retired there. Greg Maddox's number is retired. He's, he shares 31 with Fergie Jenkins. Chris Bryant to me seems like he should, but I don't. I don't know. It's it's very odd that whole thing. Um, to me, I think the ring splits the tie. I you know I I think it the you know and whether it's ten years, fifteen, whatever. I think what the Cubs should do is they should take that iconic photo of when they're all jumping into each other's arms after they won the World Series and just that be the statue of him, Rizzo, Baez. Well, that's I wonder the thing. where I got the that idea. Is that one already, <laughs> right? Well, it's that's the thing, ridiculous. though. Ridiculous. Like mm. what? Like what would Bryant be on the Cubs without Rizzo and mm. Baez? Would he be the superstar that we're saying he is? Would he be so beloved if it was just him? Right. I mean, he he had a lot of hype coming up. He was the number one prospect in baseball heading into 2015, and he he didn't disappoint. He was one of the top third basemen in WAR uh, his first three years. If you go by Fangraphs War, if you want to get real analytical from 2015 to 2017, only Mike Trout had a higher war than him. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of people that think it was just 15 and 16. And it's like, you can argue that even his 2017 numbers were better than his MVP season in 2016. Correct. And it, it, it there's just so many things about the guy that made the Cubs better that didn't show up in the box score all the time. And... The real, the real true baseball fans really know that. Like Herb just said, like correct. Like he <laughs> knows, and he's a Sox fan. Mm -hmm. Like there's just a lot of people that I feel like just didn't appreciate him because, you know, he had some nagging injuries and he didn't hit 40 home runs a year like he did in 2016 every year. Yeah. So it's a tough crowd. Yeah, at Wrigley. real it, tough crowd. It, yeah, it's disappointing, honestly. But not to take anything away from Greg Maddox and. I know uh, Lawrence in the chat, he asked if I ever saw Maddox play. I mean, I never saw him live, but, I mean, I was a Cubs fan in the 2000s. I, I remember watching him. I remember seeing his 300th win yeah. uh, on TV. That was a cool moment. So, um, but that was the back end of his career. Unfortunately, I didn't see, like, his prime. Yeah. So, so honestly, <laughs> like, the, the apex of Bryant's career actually maybe came with the Cubs. Like, Maddox was still on his way up. So, yeah. again, I think that's a tiebreaker. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. Chris Bryant is the, the, is the right answer here. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of articles out there where people are saying, you know, what if Maddox stayed with the Cubs? What if he never went to the Braves? What if, what if, what if? What mm -hmm. if he pitched with Kerry Wood? Like, <laughs> but you can't, you can't, didn't happen. It yeah, didn't happen. I think the answer is Chris Bryant. I'm biased because I'm a Chris Bryant fan. I went to his first game ever versus the San Diego Padres when James Shields, who is, by the way, going back, Aaron Rowan's cousin, um, made sweet love to Chris Bryant on that day and struck him out like three times. Um, April 17, 2015. I literally, I literally bought tickets for April 20th in Pittsburgh because up until that point, the Cubs were debuting their rookies on the road. So I was like, the, the one after the deadline for the manipulation of service time is the Pittsburgh game, and I love Pittsburgh also. So I was like, I'm going to see this great player make a debut once that didn't happen, I bought tickets when they announced it on that Thursday. I was like, I'm going to that game. Went to it. He sucked. But that man, minor league player of the year, rookie of the year, MVP, World Series champion, like Cody said, his numbers, only Mike Trout for a three-year period surpassed him. Yeah. I think the Cubs management both did both of these guys wrong. Firstly, the Cubs, the service time manipulation of Chris Bryant, and then like the media stuff they put out there kind of putting Chris Bryant as the bad guy as he was the player rep for the Cubs and when he starts speaking up for himself and his players mm -hmm. in spring training you see a lot of Cub fans like oh he doesn't want to play here he's all oh. about the money all that garbage yeah. like it's kind of reminds me of how White Sox fans treat Yohan Mankata even though Yohan's not as good as Chris Bryant was as a Cub 
it disgusts me that you have a great player. And, yes, he had injury problems. He's not trying to injure himself. That ball that hit him in the face in Colorado, I think that really turned the tide for his career. So, yeah, Chris Bryant overall had the better Cub career. Greg Maddox, of right. course, Hall of Famer. I went to his Hall of Fame induction because that's the same year that Frank Thomas got inducted. But for Cubs, Chris Bryant means more than Greg Maddox ever will. Yeah, yeah. There's, it's weird that that uh, there there is a, a, a like a, a section of Cubs Cubsdom too that like claims Maddox and Maddox does not belong to the Cubs. He's a Brave. Greg Maddox wow. is an Atlanta Brave. Yes, yeah, that's Over what he with. is. That rotation with Maddox, Glavin, Smoltz. That yeah. I mean, I feel like you can argue that being one of the like the best one of the best rotations for, for sure. For I, a, I don't a certain period of time. At the same time, though, yeah. I, I have a hard time imagining that Chris Bryant could ever be anything more than a Chicago Cub. I don't know like what yeah. he would have to do in Colorado to ever really be considered a Colorado Rod Rock. It's to never win. gonna happen. Winning would have to be the, the star. They'd have to finally, you know, win. They don't even have a World Series. I th- not only they winning, start- but I think I, like another MVP award or two. Yeah, really. yes. I mean, yeah, but you heard him on that press conference accolades. when the Cubs were playing Colorado. He was like saying that he wants to do what he did with the Cubs for other teams, right. plural teams. So I yeah, don't know if he has like, his heart that's set. A lot of what he said when he went to Colorado is like now he like referenced guys like John Lackey, John Lester, uh, when he was like a rookie or even his sophomore year when he won MVP. Like, he, he wants to be kind of like the mentor right. or, or just like that veteran presence in a locker room full of young guys ready to, to win. And, I mean, they started off the year pretty they good. They started off the year They're good. in a, the wrong division to do that, but right. whatever. Yeah. The, AL, the NL West is a juggernaut. Everybody but Arizona is over 500. Yeah. All right. so. Coming up, we are going to play a fun game concerning Las Vegas. We're going to be talking about some Las Vegas attractions, and whether we, whether or not we think they're a jackpot or a bust. But first, support for CHGO is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best at men's below-the-waist grooming. All right, so you guys are going to have to bear with me. I'm Catholic. I think actually reading this thing is a sin. <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember but Bad News Bears. Remember they bring out the other. That's right. Whatever. Anyway, Manscaped's <laughs> products are precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped's performance package is the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. You will get 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code CHGO at manscaped.com. Manscaped.com has the performance package 4.0, and it is a game changer. Inside this package, you will find their lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, weed whacker ear and nose hair trimmer, Great sound effects, Stephen. <laughs> crop preserver ball deodorant, crop reviver toner, performance boxer briefs, and a travel bag to hold your goodies. First I got off, that. It's great. Did you, did you get it? I got I, one, too. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I got one, too. Me, too. <laughs> <laughs> the lawnmower 4.0. The trimmer is the future of grooming and, dare I say, the greatest ball trimmer ever. Who decides that? Is that like a wire cutter consumer reports thing? <laughs> they did a Twitter poll, probably. Probably a Twitter <laughs> poll. Uh, their fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents t- thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. Their lawnmower 4.0 is waterproof and also has a 400K LED spotlight you need for a more preci- precise shave. Mm-hmm. Because this trimmer is waterproof, you can say goodbye to the mess on the wa- bathroom floor. You thought that was good, but want to take your grooming game even further to the next level? The Performance Package 4.0 also includes the Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer. Sad to say that's something I'm in need of these days. The Weed Whacker is also waterproof and provides proprietary skin-safe technology, which helps reduce nicks, snags, and tugs in those delicate nose holes. I actually don't have that problem because my nose is so big, so there's a lot of room to work. (laughs) Anyway, Manscaped has even thrown in... Two free gifts to the Performance 4.0 package, the Manscaped Boxers and the Shed Travel Bag. Bring your comfort and boxers to another level. It's time to take care of yourself, so go to manscaped.com and get 20% off plus free shipping with the code CHGO. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code CHGO at manscaped.com. I made it. You did it. did it. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. (laughs) 
You have to go to confession. (laughs) (laughs) All right, let's play some games here. Las Vegas. We're talking, you know, I think all of us here have been to Vegas. Mm -hmm. Had uh, varying amounts of fun. Sometimes we win. Sometimes we lose. What happens in Vegas is supposed to stay in Vegas, but not today. So let's bring up our first thing. Jackpot or bust? The World Series of Poker. For me, that's a jackpot. It's uh, very entertaining. I wish I had the skills to be in those in that tournament, any of those seats. I love the World Series of Poker. It's uh, very entertaining. And when uh, Chris Moneymaker made it a big-time thing, I was there watching it live. Not live, but you know, on <laughs> TV, because yeah, at yeah, that yeah. time it was tape delayed. Uh, I'll, I'll go bust. It's all, it was always something I would, if I, if I wanted to just put ESPN on and it was on. I feel like, like it's a very like 2003 background. thing. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I've just never got I, it. I that. hate that the award is a bracelet. Who the hell wants to win a bracelet? <laughs> but like, All of them do. They have like sideline reporters for that. Like they I would do. love to just cover it. Like they take it seriously. And I, I kind of love that. I like the characters, um, but now it's become so big and like they have to do it live. And I just like lose track of the whole thing. Do you um, consider it a sport? Because they do. No. I do. Okay. Yeah. If they have a, I do. You do? Yeah. I am the, I am the only bust. It takes a very, <laughs> According very to skilled chat. person like to yeah. win at the World Series. Bowl. And a steely nerve, like the same thing you need to have mm-hmm. in golf or uh, baseball. So, yeah, I think it's a sport. Jackpot. You don't do anything athletic, but, you know. <laughs> so, I'm a, I'm bust. Cody's a bust. You two are jackpots. Let's move on to our no- next thing. Baccarat. I don't. I've never played this. Yeah, I think it's a bust. What's the deal with Baccarat? I don't even know. That's like a stand-up line. Hey, Every what's time the I deal? see that, I'm like, I don't There's know. No I Bach, this. no Rot. Move to the next thing. I know nothing yeah. about it. it. has to be a bust. Sorry, yeah, it's anyone a bust who for loves me. it. Have you played it, Kevin? I have not. I've always been intrigued with like there's always like, you know, some dude there with like a pile of chips. I guess I kind of like I, I think there's only like two choices you can make. Mm-hmm. I don't really understand. You know, I, I like I would like to know more about it. But That's a good Lawrence. one. Lawrence says he loves love Burt Baccarat. Who doesn't? Same. That's perfect. <laughs> I think it's it's Burt Baccarat, isn't it? Yeah. But we Austin like that Pons. better. I do like Burt great, Baccarat. Great scene in Austin when he's playing blackjack. That's right. I love it. I'll stay. Let's move on, Stephen. Number three, Las Vegas buffets. Jackpot. Oh, Have you participated? I have, yes. At the Aria. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I went to the one of the – I went to probably the best buffet I've ever been to in my entire life at the Aria. Um, Were you staying there? No, I wasn't no. staying there. At the time, I was dating a girl. Her mom bought me and her girl – or. Her mom bought me and her uh, tickets to, like, a show or something. I don't even remember what kind of show it was. Um, it was, like, some dance thing. Uh, but it, it, in, it was the watch Cody eat 30 pounds of lobster oh show. Oh, my God. It was. There was like, well, the best part was is that you could get any type of food at this buffet. Like, it, was, it wasn't just, like. Like, it, there was every ethnicity. Oh, yeah, they're huge. Like I've they're, had they're the huge. one at the Bellagio, but it was underwhelming. I, I've been to the Bellagio one. It is underwhelming. I feel like Las Vegas buffets are a bust because there's yeah. so many great restaurants there. That's Why true. waste it at a buffet? <laughs> yeah. Monami Gabi is out there, also here in Chicago. I've never been to a Vegas buffet. I've only heard about them, and I'm good. Because when I go to a buffet, I like to do, like, cheap. Like, that's what buffets are for. I know. They like, could be, like, 60 bucks. They are yeah, expensive. Right? I'm real yeah. good. And if I was there, I would have to eat more than I was comfortable with because I had to make sure that I make the sixty dollars worth it. So if you got a seven seventy seven buffet, I'm in. But you have to like dress nicely for these buffets. Nope. So you, you can't do? just I no, think sir. so. You can't just like stroll in hungover. <laughs> no, sir. They're like, Sir, you can't wear that hat. It's actually been wear- like probably twenty years since I've been to Las Vegas <laughs> buffet. So maybe they've changed. Maybe- I went in twenty fifteen. So yeah, I mean Did you have was- a backwards hat on? I don't remember, you but I know I didn't did. dress up super. <laughs> like I didn't dress up nice for it because I just knew I was about to. Did they have a carving somewhere. station with some prime rib? Oh yeah, that, they had everything. It was it was it was cool. Are Is they still a thing after after COVID? That's a oh, great question. I hope, I hope oh. not. <laughs> do you like go for the food that you want to eat first, or do you gar- garbage up your thing with like salad? Yeah, I honestly, I think 
the very first time I went up, I grabbed one thing from like every station. Mm. I, that's what I did. Yep. It made no sense, but I just like I was like I have to try something from everything. A guy I used to work with at score named Doug Buffon, which everybody knows is a Chicago Bear. He used to say, "Don't waste your your time on the salad. Just eat that's what, what you, they want you to eat. Do. What you want to eat first. So you it's like going to Fogo de Chao. They they have got that nice whatever. Yeah, don't go to the salad bar. You're there for a reason. Eat yeah. the good food. And our guy Stephen Nicholas, who's doing the production of this, he's an eater. I'm sure if he goes to Vegas, he would eat a lot and put them out of business. Jackpot is a lot for this. Stephen says jackpot on the Las Vegas buffet. Number four is Hangover, the best Vegas movie. Yes, jackpot. Yes, jackpot. So good. Bust. Oh, no. Herb, oh, why? No. Vegas vacations out there, casino, leaving Las said, Vegas. Okay, he just said I, I kind of forgot about Vegas vacation. You, clearly, you could tell that me and Casey like grew up Young. with it. Like, it yes. came out when we were like, at least I think, in our I think the teens. answer is jackpot. Some yeah. of the jokes probably you know, you know how, don't age well, but probably. it's you of the quote time. That, I was like the Tarzan that movie for like five Ocean's years. Eleven. Ocean's Eleven. I forgot about the Ocean's Eleven. I mean, those movies, like I loved Ocean's Eleven. But they made the same movie in 12. Same thing with Hangover. That's three of the same damn movies. Yeah. Exact same The movies. very first one was the best. Casino I feel like hang, is, the first Hangover was actually pretty groundbreaking. It came at a time yeah. when comedies were struggling. Yeah, um, It wasn't over the top. It wasn't Will Ferrell. Type of, it's just whatever. very quotable. Like yeah. that. That's why I love it so much. It it's was like, of the time. It was perfect yeah. for the time. It, that's, but Casino was a real movie. Made with real people about I, real people, the, the mayor Oscar Goodwin was in the movie. I love I love Casino. They um, grab I have a guy's fr- hand for cheating. Remember when Frank Schwab came in here on CHO podcast a while back? He oh, actually yeah. thinks Frank. Casino is better than Goodfellas, which He's is wrong. the worst take of all time. He's wrong. Twenty one, also a good movie. Ryan, what was Herrera. 21? I haven't seen it. That's the card cutting with, movie, with right? Kevin Spacey. He's yeah, like we don't talk about him anymore. <laughs> yeah. No, we don't. Mm-hmm. But or Bruno. it is a good movie. Bruno. <laughs> Number five, is Vegas the best bachelor slash bachelorette party destination? Absolutely not. I just is went to Nashville, Nashville <laughs> and I can tell that is the best bachelorette mm-hmm. place by far. I I'm disagree. not even a bachelorette. Wait a minute. How are you weighing out on the best bachelorette place? Hey, I You've can tell. You've been to a bachelorette party in no, Nashville? No, I can just, no, I saw all the bachelorette parties <laughs> down there and they're all having a joyous time. So is letting, Vegas. Letting everything loose, but not like debauchery. Vegas is more debauchery. No. It seemed like Nashville is like everybody's having an enjoyable time when we're not out here trying to t- chase tail. We're trying to <laughs> enjoy each other's Time. So, Vegas is yeah. more like, so what, let's what, have some random One of the sets. great all-time mm-hmm. NFL draft moments, I don't know if you remember when they had it in Nashville, they did a feature on all the bachelorette parties who had scheduled their bachelorette parties for NFL weekend, not realizing. There's going to be some draft. this weekend, too. It was amazing. I, I guess in Vegas. Yeah. I feel like it's kind of tailed off. I'm the only married person on this panel. I actually went to New Orleans for my bachelor party. Wow. I, I, I felt on that part, I, in 2012, I felt like it had overtaken Vegas. What did you go like in a hot New Orleans time? We went in May. It was kind of on the cusp. It was awesome. I had so, a friend who went in August and we went, had to go with him. I sweated like for <laughs> five days straight. I know, but then you're drinking <laughs> like strawberry beaters the entire time. Yeah. Guys, Vegas is a woman's town, so maybe I'm biased because we, I could do whatever, basically whatever I want there for free. And me and my girlfriends could do whatever we want there for free. Vegas. So, in my opinion, Vegas is better. For so you're going to go to parties. Vegas for your bachelor? Party. Yes. Have you gone there for a bachelor party? I have. How was it? It was a blast. Okay. I can't talk about what happened. I'm just kidding. I mean, it stayed there <laughs> apparently. <laughs> but I really, really did have fun in Vegas for a bachelor. What did I don't you guys know do? if I would have mine in Vegas. I mean, just like endless day club, pool party, endless drinks. People were just. Have you been to one in Nashville? I have not. Okay. So maybe I need to have I feel like that Nashville experience. Nashville is making it. I have way, been in Nashville. Like I feel yeah. like Nashville's done. With. Nash Vegas. You think, I'm, oh, I'm you over Nashville. Over I've Nashville? never even been there. Oh, you should go. I was like that the same way. Going yeah, there is a different thing. I just thing. feel like the whole Instagram aesthetic, everything's like yeah. white. Everyone's like this. Um, I live in Nashville now. Like, who yeah. cares? <laughs> <laughs> who cares, Jay Cutler? Who cares, like, who cares Jay Cutler? <laughs> I don't know. Like, oh, I'm leaving Illinois. I'm moving to Nashville. Great. Fine. Bye. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I'm okay with that take. So jackpot but, it is all right. for Vegas bachelor and bachelorette parties. Number six, getting married in Vegas. I don't like mm, it. I'm not bust. into it. Bust. <laughs> bust. Not into jackpot it. Jackpot because you can get married by Elvis. How is that not a jackpot? I mean, we're y- younger and don't. 
I mean, me and you are kind of the close, so. But I was never, I was never Doug Elvis, so. You could get married by Elvis. Yeah, but it's not real Elvis. It's like decrepit. Maybe it is real Elvis. <laughs> Man, real Elvis. Elvis. No, no, it's a bust. All right, number seven, Celine Dion. Jackpot. Love it. Jackpot. 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 I don't even like her music. Only in Vegas. For Only sure. in Vegas. You go see her at. You go see her at the United Center. Uh, it's a powerhouse. Vegas, yeah. yes. Vegas, it's probably yeah. awesome. I would love to see her in Vegas. I would love to see any performance out in Vegas. It seems like like the residents are great. They like if ever like Jamiroquai goes out there, I'm in. That would be fun. I saw <laughs> I saw uh, Calvin Harris at the Omnia nightclub. Oh, okay. Is that awesome. A DJ? Yes. Awesome. Awesome experience. So fun. Ten out of ten. Does Steve Aoki play there? Probably. <laughs> Probably at one of those uh, pool bars. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's the only other DJ I know. <laughs> like Wet Republic or whatever. Number nine, Blackjack. Jackpot. 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 Yeah. yeah. It's the Jackpot. one game everyone knows how to play, I feel like. And it's well, really well, I don't know if everybody knows how to play. They know the kind of the rules, but I get mad at people who don't understand, like, hey, man, you got that 13, that dealer's showing four. Stop hitting. Don't hit again. You're messing up everybody's money. Stop it. So here's a Chicago tie-in story. <laughs> I was out at the Bellagio for the 2008 winter meetings. I think that was the year the Yankees signed CeCe Sabathia. While, while I was out there, news broke that Rod Blagojevich had s- sold that Senate seat. So it was huge. I don't know why I remember that. But that's not the tie-in. <laughs> I was at a blackjack table with former Cubs general manager Jim Hendry. Mm. And that dude split tens. What the wow. hell was going on? What was showing? I, I, it doesn't matter. You never I, split tens. I know it's a winning you, hand. I mean, if you're at the if the table by yourself and you want to play recklessly like that, it's your money. Yeah. But does somebody else is at the table. He lost. You, everyone lost. It ruined everything. Did and you that, talk to him about that? I kind of grim. Uh, do you bring that up when, I mean. Yes. If somebody bets wrong. You, you call just, people out. You, you, you say, hey, person. <laughs> yeah. you, you, Usually, hey, Jim when that person showing a card that's below six, six or below, you stay on your 12 or below. Like, one of us might have to hit the 12, yeah. but it, not you. You're an amateur. And, <laughs> and, they'll, and other people will be meaner about it. I'm at least, <laughs> hey, explaining the game. And then the dealer is like, yes, that's true. Because the dealer's trying to get paid, too. That's right. It's like, you lose money, ain't getting tipped, or she ain't getting tipped. So that's, that's another, great, another good story. I was out there. Like, Nick Friedel was at the table. He won a bunch of money, like crazy money. I could not win. Jim Hendry could not win. Nick Friedel was just piling up chips. And I think it, like he, at that point, he like had made like $4,000. Wow. What table was this? Is that a $25 table? We weren't playing for a lot. It was like $25. I think it was playing like $25, 50 hand maybe. And, uh, It'd be rich. I mean, he was just, he was just doing crazy, right? Yeah. Um, and at the end, he's like, all right, we're, we're on our way back to, to the, our hotel rooms. And Nick says, all right, you know what? I'm going to go big or I'm going to go home. I'm going to take half of this, I don't know if it's 3000 4000 and I'm going to put it on the, the, on the table on, a, on the way back to the elevator. Wow. I'm like, dude, don't do that, whatever. So he puts, he puts $2,000 on one hand. I'm like, oh, man, don't do this. <laughs> what do you think happens? He won. No. No? Well, uh, the story goes from here. They always try to get it all back from you, and they always get it back from you in Vegas. So he puts it down and he gets a six and a five. Oh, oh God! You got to double down. A hundred percent. You have you to have double to down. double down. You have to. You have to double down. You have to. Dealer have to. has a six. So oh, he's got a six and a five. More. And a six. Delicious. So now he's got his, all of his four thousand dollars that he built up over like five hours of playing, whatever. And he's just like, oh, dealer's like, do you want the card down? Nick says, give me the card down. Goes down. That's what happened. Dealer. Turns over her card. It's a four. Uh, then right? Then an ace. Hits it. Ten. Uh, so dealer has 20. Nick has a uh, six and a five and a card down. And Nick's like, I don't even want to see it. I do not want to see it, right? Woman flips it over. It's a 10 for 21. Oh, oh my God. Just absolute bedlam. Like wow. everyone we were with was just going crazy. So he doubled wow. his money on the way That's back. That's an awesome all, story. Yeah. Wow. So. Nick Frito. Wow. You guys have listen. good Vegas stories? I <sighs> went the first time with my roommate at the time, Thomas, and I didn't have enough money to play in this 
tournament, this poker tournament, when we got to the stratosphere. So he staked me. He staked me the whatever, sixty hundred dollars And, you know, I was an average poker player at the time, but I got a run of cards, and I was on my shit. And then I got to the <laughs> final. on his shit. Me and <laughs> another dude were just battling back and forth. We were battling for at least 30, 40 minutes. And we looked at each other as like, dude, you just want to split this pot? He's like, yeah. So I split like $600 with the, or $1,200, got 600 from me and this guy. I won a Vegas tournament in a, a Texas Hold'em. I had to give, I didn't have to give, but I gave Thomas like 120 because he staked me the 60 and I gave him 60 for his troubles. But I was like, <laughs> starting off Vegas right. And also, Stratosphere slept on. It's the last one on the strip. Go ahead and get there. Nice. It's awesome. It's uh, cheaper too. So the one time I've been there was in 2015 i was actually out on the west coast for like me and my girlfriend at the time did this like west coast like road trip but we flew into la rented a car and then like we uh what i had a tree say that again went through drasho tree uh i don't know i I (laughs) can't tell you all i know is that we went north northern california because i have family up there went to san francisco then came all the way back back down to vegas before we went to San Diego and we were in Vegas for like two days. And I remember we were on, we, we got on some party van or whatever and went to a couple like rooftop bars and stuff. Like we didn't do anything too crazy, but I mean, that was my one time in Vegas. It was, I mean, I, it, I definitely want to go back. I just got, I, I think got, we should I have a like CHO fine. field trip. Yeah. I feel Let's like I just it. got a little taste for, for Casey's bachelorette party. Yes. Yeah. Whenever that invited. is. Don't yes. hope my boyfriend's not watching. <laughs> <laughs> Casey's boyfriend at the time. No. <laughs> tell him to come through. Casey, what's your good your favorite Vegas um, story? You know, I just have one. I've been there like three or four times. And we, my friend and I walked all the way from like Mandalay Bay to the wind. We just wanted to like walk the strip and yeah. just see the, see everything. And we stopped and sat down in like one of these hallways at the wind. And we were exhausted. Like you think it's a short walk, but it's not. It's no. absolutely not because these hotels are massive. And we were sitting there and just kind of like waiting, waiting to get up and keep going. And I see this tall man with curly hair and sunglasses on walk by me in like plaid golf pants. And he has like two security guards near him. And I'm like looking and he's walking by me. And I'm like, oh my God, that's Will Ferrell. Like it's definitely Will Ferrell. So then I'm on the internet and I'm like, is, is Will Ferrell in Vegas? Like looking at Twitter. <laughs> he, it was him. He was there for a golf tournament. He had like crazy pants on. He was very tall. Mm-hmm. Definitely him. And I just regret not saying anything because I was afraid that if I did speak to him that he was going to be like kind of a jerk and I was going to be like it's like that never meet your heroes thing yeah. like I didn't want to meet him but I really wanted to like shout an obscure office reference and be like D'Angelo Vickers and see if he was like nice so I can confirm like he actually would have done that to you because I have a bad Will Ferrell experience I'm glad I didn't then in uh 2006 at Juliet Speedway NASCAR was here and he was there to promote um how they good nights Talladega Nights. And I don't know if you guys have ever been in a NASCAR media center. It is the crustiest, like, <laughs> least welcoming place in the world because every racing rider hates their life because they're covering auto racing for a living. And so it was like the Sunday morning. He and John C. Riley are up there. By the way, I met John C. Riley afterwards, and that dude is a prince of a person. So I he love was John nice. C. Riley. Chicagoan. John C. He's from Chicago, of course. White Sox nice. fan. Okay, good. Yeah. Good. Wow. So yeah. he's up there. No one is asking him any questions. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to throw Will Ferrell a bone and just ask him a question because, like, literally, this is probably the toughest room he's ever worked. Yeah. I mean, he's trying to make jokes up there. These dudes from the Charlotte Observer and <laughs> Fayetteville, like, they, they want no part of this crap, right? <laughs> so I'm like, hey, uh, you guys remember the Bill Brasky skit on Saturday Night Live, right? That's yeah. a really famous Saturday Night Live skit. Great skit. And actually, somebody signed up for a membership on CHGO the other day with the with the username Bill Brasky, I was pretty pretty <laughs> excited. But so I'm like, hey, Will, who would win in a NASCAR race, Ricky Bobby or Bill Brasky? And he looks at me and he goes, "That's an obscure reference." Next question. And like, he said it like really mean. Yeah. And I was like, I'm glad I didn't say hi then. And like literally, that was like the only I was the only person asked him a question. Yeah. And like, and then that was like it. And I was like, just have fun with it. Like, why? I was like, you're Will Ferrell. Like, you're, don't you have improvis- improvisational skills? Like, yeah. yeah. Was going and on? you were on SNL. I know not at that time, but damn, you know, Bill Brosky is. Yeah. You're I in re- Chicago land. Come on now. I do regret not yeah. saying anything, but I was frozen. I was okay. in fear that he was going to be a dick. So I have a great <laughs> Vegas story. 
and I think we'll finish with this if you guys want to hear it. It's about the yeah. time yeah. that 24 year old Kevin Kadek met 18 year old LeBron James. Hmm. Oh there my is. God, that's wow. you. That hair. No look at way. that. Wow. That is me. Uh, look, this is this was taken <laughs> at about goatee? three. What this is, is taken about three thirty in the morning. <laughs> Kevin, you had a glow up. I'm hammered. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I was at that point, like I was just subsisting on Boulevard wheat beer and like Chipotle. <laughs> so, you know, everyone's got that little puffy look. For sure. You know, yeah. the, you know, For sure. There he is. That is amazing. LeBron is just very much like, let's just get this over. You guys want to hear the story? Though? <laughs> yeah. So we were out there 2004 for a bachelor party. He was coming off of his rookie year and... It was the Tarver Jones, I think the second Tarver Jones fight weekend. Mm -hmm. And like literally every NBA player who was out of the playoffs was basically in Vegas for that fight that weekend. And we were staying at the Palms. And it was back when like the Palms was the Palms. Yeah. And Maloof still owned it, whatever. And everyone was seeing like NBA players at, at, at our bachelor party. We had a cabana next to Paul Pierce and all of his boys. So we watched the Smarty Jones Kentucky Derby with them. It was awesome. Everyone said, hey, have you seen LeBron? No one had seen, like, people had seen LeBron, but no one in the party had seen him. And, like, like we made it a goal. It's like, we want to meet LeBron. Right. And LeBron yeah. was LeBron, but not LeBron at that point. Like, he was still. Yeah. Up and coming. On the up and coming. Mm -hmm. So, we go, out to dinner. we go out to dinner the, <laughs> the last time. night. And we come back, and we're playing blackjack, you know, forever at a $10 or $15 table. And, like. Probably two hours in, I just see this huge hand with a bracelet like worth more than my life just throw down a stack of bills like this on the table. Yep. And like no sooner does that money hit the felt than the pit boss is there. I, I don't even look up to see who it is yet. Pit boss goes, Mr. James, we've already told you this weekend we cannot accept your action at this time because you are not 21 years of age. <laughs> Once you celebrate your 21st birthday, mm. we will be more than oh happy god. to accommodate wow. you. I'm surprised Amazing. they rejected him. I turn around, I'm like, oh my god, it's LeBron James, <laughs> and he's like, like, like center field was open on the table, and he was trying to sit down at this ten dollar blackjack table, and so I'm like, holy cow. So wow. I had a camera with me, and I was like, yo, LeBron, can I get a photo? And he's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and he had, like, two bodyguards with, with him, and I tried to give it to the bodyguard. And the bodyguard's like, I don't take photos, like, whatever. And so, so I got somebody it. else to fire Some it up. And person. I got a picture with 18-year-old LeBron James. Man, that's sad that he didn't get to play. Out in I Vegas, know. didn't get to play. No, I love your hair in if this I, photo, Kevin. I know. It was very long, right? Before I... <laughs> Um, this is just a wild photo. We should <laughs> so much going on here. I mean, you dressed up really pretty nicely too well, for we're yeah. Vegas. Party. You look yeah. like Nick Boriano yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> but see, look at that bracelet. Yeah, see, is and that yeah. chain too. The, the chain drip. was yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know, and I'm here. six foot four. Like, like how much taller is he than me? Yeah, right. he's big. Yeah. So you guys like that story? I oh, love it. I love it. Yeah. The, like, the, yeah, the had, odds. You've had great times in Vegas. I have. Let's all go. Retreat. Let's do it right now. Like, let's just leave everyone to their See their own guys. devices here for the draft. <laughs> They'll figure things out. Uh, like Steven can figure things out. Like, you're, I'm sorry, Steve. You, had, <laughs> you have to stay here. <laughs> Uninvited. <laughs> That's right. weird. You had to be 21 to play blackjack. That's dumb. Patrick said, "I wonder if LeBron had a fake ID. I mean, he like they knew who he was. Yeah. Right. You know, it wasn't like he was just like flying under the radar and trying. right. right. <laughs> like maybe he just thought they would let him play. But I think at that point, like people would be like, "Hey, 18 year old LeBron's laying down bets." I'm sure yeah. if he would have did it correctly, where he's going to like one of those private rooms. They would have allowed him to play, yeah. but he was playing in the public. People have been like, "But he wasn't Dude. quite invincible yet." Yeah, you no. know. Yeah. Yeah, he, and all those LeBron stands. I need to make it happen where I actually play blackjack. Was like, how do I make this happen where I actually do get to play blackjack with LeBron? <laughs> you think you'd be down with it for it now? Just yeah, it's oh, like, yeah. hey man, I met you when you were eighteen in Vegas. You gotta have that photo. You, like him. you try to play you, you, you try to play blackjack with me. Hey, I'm available now. Do you Let's think do he it. was there too because like Michael Jordan was a blackjack player and he thought like this is what I have to do as like the next Michael Jordan? <laughs> I mean, he's he's bit off of Michael Jordan his whole career. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah, perhaps. <laughs> MJ wants a piece of him. So. <laughs> All right, that's it for this uh, week's the Chicago Sports Podcast. I appreciate everyone joining us, Casey Standar, Herb Lawrence, and Cody Del Mendo. Make sure you stay tuned for our NFL draft coverage all weekend long here on YouTube. Smash that subscribe button. Send us a like. And uh, Adam, Olin, 
Will and Nick will be here later if Will fixes that flat tire. But until then. Get here soon, Will. Yeah, we'll (laughs) see you next time.